Well, hello once again, boys and girls. And I'm sure when William Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet back in the 1500s, I'm sure he envisioned one day an English teacher from Strawberry Crest High School playing Mario Tennis while uh, talking about his iconic Act 2, Scene 2, Balcony scene. But that's where we're led to today. Uh, this is Mario Tennis. Uh, I actually played this game a lot over the summer, last summer, and I haven't played it as much recently, but I have picked it today because we are going to unite the two most iconic characters in the Mario universe to represent our Romeo and Juliet. That is none other than Mario and Peach, because they go together, just without the being all sad all the time. Like, Mario's a happy guy. It's a me. Unlike Romeo. Oh, Romeo. I'm so sad. And Peach is just happy-go-lucky. You know, nobody dislikes Peach. Other than the fact she gets captured all the time. But, details. So, uh, Act 2, Scene 2. Uh, this does follow a very brief Act 1, Scene 1, where we learn that Romeo has the worst wingmen ever. So, Act 2 picks up right after the party has dispersed where, you know, Romeo and Juliet first met, they made out, discovered who each other were, got separated, and now the party has ended. Well, Mercutio and Benvolio, somehow in all this, they've lost Romeo because they're fantastic wingmen. And all Act 2, Scene 1 is, is them trying to find Romeo. They're not successful, but to their knowledge, he's still in love with Rosaline. And they're like, oh, maybe if we start calling out Rosaline, that will get his attention. Romeo, there's Rosaline. Little do they know, because they're terrible wingmen, that Romeo's already ditched this idea of Rosaline and that now he's going for Juliet. So, you know, we got Mario here. He's like, I'm Mario, it's-a me. And, you know, his lifelong love, Peach, who has to get escorted by the Toadettes to get a racket because she's that bougie, whatever. Um, let's just play some tennis and talk about Act 2, Scene 2. Because Act 2, Scene 1, only a couple pages. Again, Romeo has terrible wingman. So, where the scene picks up is Romeo is standing outside the Juliet house. Or the Capulet house, you know, where Juliet lives and he comes across he's kind of hidden in the bushes and he comes up to Juliet's kind of bedroom now keep in mind this is the 1500s so he can't just like DM her can't just be like hey why don't you why don't you send me a snap later that that's not that's not a thing and keep in mind they really didn't interact all that much in at the party itself. They made out for like, I don't know, a minute, 30 seconds, something, before they kind of all got separated and whatnot. So Romeo kind of comes up on the balcony and he sees Juliet standing out there. And rather than just run right up to Juliet and express his love, he kind of, I don't know, kind of creeps on her. Again, couldn't really creep on her Instagram photos because that wasn't a thing. So instead, he just kind of creeps on her conversation. And in the course of this conversation, Juliet's having an inner monologue where, you know, she thinks that she's just kind of by herself and nobody's listening. And she's like, oh, Romeo, why, why, why Romeo, right? And the, the key thing that she kind of comes across in this little soliloquy monologue that she's having is she's like, why, why do you have to be a Montague? Um, be, be some other name. And she's alluding to what she found out from the nurse where she said, you know, my only love sprung from my only hate. Saying that, Romeo, if you weren't a Montague, if you were literally any other name, if you're Romeo Jones, that we could have this great relationship and everything would work out. And it's just, 
it again it's it's comical because they just met like for, forget the whole she's 13 thing and, and and all that they just met at this party like a couple hours ago and she's just like oh be be some other name and you know she goes into this metaphor of you know if, if you called a rose by some other name it would still be as sweet you know if we called a rose um you know a stinking table well that wouldn't change the fact that we still like roses so you know this whole soliloquy she doesn't know Romeo's listening and Romeo on ground level is just staring up at Juliet just ogling at her just oh oh Juliet oh she's so beautiful oh Juliet uh, keep mind, he woke up this day in love with Rosaline because my this scene um, everything has taken place all the same day this is still the same day as the initial fight. So Romeo's sudden like 180 from Rosaline to Juliet is quite comical. And he's gonna get called out for this, mind you. And you know, he's looking at Juliet and like she's got this glove and she touches her face. And he's like, oh, I, I wish I was that glove so that I could be touching her face. Um, and thus, you know, starting the basis for um, almost every country song ever, you know how they all reference now like, oh I wish I was that pair of blue jeans on that girl um, they got that from Romeo's little, I wish I was that glove, so I could be touching her face so he slow rolls it for a little bit, and then eventually he's like alright, I'm gonna stop hiding in the bushes I'm going to expose that I'm here and so he's like uh, I'm here Juliet, sup girl and of course, Juliet's startled up by this because it's like one in the morning that she's here. And she's like, what, what are you doing? You, you absolute creep. Like, what, what, what? And now Juliet kind of has to explain her way out of a couple things because, you know, she just expressed her love for Romeo, but she really didn't want him to hear. And she goes on about, you know, just because you heard me uh, you know, express my love for you. Don't think that my love is going to come that easy. You know, I, I'm actually harder to get to that. Look at this. Ju Julia right there. She's just like, oh, I, I play, I play harder to get. So, um, as, as we actually end up winning there because we destroyed all the rackets. See what, what teamwork. So, you know, they, they have this back and forth where, you know, they, they kind of express their love back and forth. And, and eventually, you know, they kind of quit with all the coy games that they play with each other. And like, oh, yeah, I, I love you. I love you, too. Oh. And th this goes back and forth for a little bit. Well, eventually, the nurse uh, is kind of like, Juliet, it's, it's late. Where are you? And, you know, the problem is, if Romeo gets discovered and Juliet tells him this, like, he could get killed. And Romeo's like, oh, I don't care. I'm just, I'm just in love. I'm so in love. And so they keep going back and forth. And where they leave off, and, and what is probably the reason that I just, I hate this scene. No, I, I don't like this play to begin with for a multitude of reasons. But number one is how quickly they rush into their relationship. Greatest love story ever told. They agree at the end of this scene. They go, all right, if you truly love me, send me a message sometime tomorrow saying you want to get married. Y'all you, you, just, you just met, like, at the party. Not that long ago. Romeo, you woke up today in love with Rosaline, and now the greatest love story ever told, love at first sight, you are going to send a message to marry Juliet? Oh, okay. You, you do you, man. So, that's kind of where they leave off. Um, Juliet runs back inside to deal with the nurse, comes back out. Um, they exchange a few more kisses. It's, you know, whatever. Romeo's like, oh, I love you. And a thousand times good night. Okay, well, that's lovely. And, you know, the scene leaves off. Julia goes back in her room. Romeo climbs down, 
creepily from the balcony. And that's kind of where the scene leaves off, is that they've agreed to get married. Uh, that was quick, but that's what they're gonna do. Um, and that's Act 2, Scene 2, the most iconic, well, among the most iconic Shakespearean scenes of all time. Love, lovely. So on your Nearpod, um, actually what you're gonna be doing today is comparing uh, this scene to a famous musical, West Side Story, that actually borrowed a lot from Romeo and Juliet. You're gonna have to pass on, to, on there and compare it. And I also want you, uh, on your Nearpod today, I want you to compare, I want you to kind of put a modern twist on it. So if this balcony scene was set in the year 2020, AKA today, how it might have looked different compared to it being set in the late 1500s. That's what I want you to think about for your Nearpod. Uh, this has been another edition of Mr. Henderson playing video games, talking about Romeo and Juliet, and I will see you next time.